Alright, so yesterday we found out that there was the new July 2019 ban list for the OCG, like over in uh, Asia. And it actually hits quite a few notable things. And while this doesn't sound very exciting by the way I'm putting it, it really is because it almost seems kind of like they're trying to slowly reset the game over there. Kind of like how they did with the final ban list before the... Uh, 2014 Duelist Alliance format, and so I just kind of want to go over this ban list and uh, everything that it covers. So, if we go down to the Forbidden, we find that the Forbidden cards are Nightmare Mermaid and Gandora X, the Dragon of Demolition, and these are pretty substantial hits for over there because Gandora FTK was a really popular deck, but now it's impossible to do. And the only reason it was possible to do in the first place over there was because of an errata that they have compared to ours. I don't know, it's really weird. But the Nightmare Mermaid ban is actually really substantial because Orcist is a force to be reckoned with in this meta in both the OCG and the TCG. And while I think if they're trying to cripple the deck a lot, Mermaid wouldn't be the best hit, it'd more be a better hit to hit the Galatea. That's why, um, you know, my Cherry's target, instead of Mermaid, I actually use Galatea because they can't really do the combos in the first place without the Galatea to make instead of, uh, like, to help make the Bardage and everything. And so Mermaid getting off the list really hinders the deck, though, because it's a lot harder to get the combos started, like, um, to get the Nightmare out, and to get your Galatea out, and then use the Nightmares and the Harp Horror, blah blah blah, the entire combo that's necessary. And they're gonna have to find out a new way, and I think I actually remember back before I had a Mermaid, I had some sort of combo, but I don't even remember how to do it, it's just really complicated. Right now I'm actually letting someone borrow my Aqua Dolphin and my three Light Stages, and I really hope I get them back next week. But we scroll down to the limited list now, and we see that Salaman Great Gazelle, Thunder Dragon Colossus, Thunder Dragon Hawk, and Lady Debug, along with Metaverse, have been limited. And all of these are pretty insane. So Gazelle being put to one means that if they if Salaman Great players really want to get to their Gazelle, they're gonna need to use the Salaman Great Circle, which could have been used to search something better, like a foul or something. But the Gazelle is one of the main, if not the main, combo starters in uh, the entire Salaman Great e strategy. So one Gazelle is really going to hinder the entire deck's playstyle for the combos. The one Colossus will really suck for Thunder Dragon players. Like, not just the Danger Thunder, but just Thunder Dragon in general. They can't end off on, like, three Colossus or two a Colossus and a Titan. And yeah, it can be recurred through stuff like Thunder Dragon Fusion... But that's only if you're not playing the Danger build. And, I mean, one Colossus isn't terrible, but it still really, like, it still hits the deck in some way. And then the one Hawk really stops the Danger Thunder players from getting the Roar and Hawk combo to help boost out a Saryuja. And, uh, because they played two Hawk, and two Hawk is, well, not as good at, or one Hawk's not as good as two Hawk. And so... That's gonna really suck. And then Lady Debug, we've had that at 1 over here in the TCG since, um, I believe it was last list. And 1 Metaverse, that really stops Mystic Mine. Uh, someone's texting me, who cares. That really stops Mystic Mine, as well as some other decks that may use it. I played it in Altergeist, I believe, in order to get a Secret Village out. Because that was actually a really good uh, strategy to help with multi faker and everything. And the semi-limited list, it semi-limits uh, ABC Dragon Buster. I believe it was limited before. I checked the OCG list yesterday, actually. Like, the entire list they have. And so, there's, I think they're slowly starting to bring back um, the ABC strategy over there. I think Union Hanger is at 3. Like, they finally brought it back to 3. Um a few lists before, and then we have huh, Spiral Quick Fix going to two, and I think it's limited over here as well because of Machine Dupe plays, but Quick Fix going to two will 
start to pick up the pace of Spiral again. Because Spiral was a really good deck before, but after the hits of Quick Fix and then I think Drone and then all the other stuff that they, he had to lose, it really, really hurt the deck. But if they start bringing it back, I don't think I'll mind too much. I mean, it's not that hard to get over Spiral, even if they have like their full power stuff. Just like with Zoo. I, I wouldn't even mind if they gave us like Dryden and them back. I really wouldn't care. But Dark Arm Dragon is now at 2. And I believe ever since um, Teladad has been out, da uh, Dark Arm Dragon has been at 1. And so if they're starting to bring it back, which I knew they could have done in the first place because it has a very specific summoning condition like Mullen Glacia, then it's gonna maybe pop up in a few more Dark-related decks. Like, not too many meta strategies, but I can definitely see it in a lot more roguish, like, decks. As kind of like a funky tech option. And then we go down and find that Dark Greffer is put at 2. I don't know if it was limited over there, like it was over here. But anyways, Dark Greffer 2 doesn't really do much. I believe the only deck uh, that plays the Dark Greffer uh, and its in strategy is the Danger Thunder deck. And they only play like 1. So I don't think that really matters. And then we got Dino Wrestler Pankratops. And that prevents people from sighting 3 now. I actually um, main 1 in my dinos, and I used to side 2, like just in case I need more, and I never really sided them in, so I took them out. But even if I wanted to now, I couldn't do that, because it's at 2. Well, I mean, this is Japan's list, but I'm saying, like, worlds, if this list counted for worlds. But I'm, I'm it's just like a theoretical thing. But 2 Pankratops really makes it to where, if you want to side it, you're only going to be able to side 2, and you won't be able to, like, main any if you want to side any. Unless you want to do one and one, but th that shit kind of sucks. And that really does a lot to the side decks, because Pankratops is an amazing card. And we go down, we have TG Hyper Librarian. I think he was at one before, and now it's coming up to two. I don't really care. Cyberstein is now at two. And that's pretty cool, because Cyberstein FTK was a thing, even though it wasn't too consistent. And Cyberstein's a card that we've been... It's, it's kind of like Stratos now. It's starting to come back. We'll actually get to Stratos in a second. But we also have Trish. It was limited, but now it's semi-limited. No decks really play it anyway. Not many decks play Synchros at all, unless it's like a combo starter or extender, uh, like Ib, or if it's just like a stun card like Nat Beast. And then Necroz Cycle, it was at 1, but now it's at 2. They're starting to get Necroz their stuff back. Mystic Mind going to 2. Oh, actually kind of spoiled the unlimited thing right there, but Mystic Mind going to 2 is pretty great along with the one metaverse and then the one terraforming the OCG already has because now Mystic Mind can't be played in as many decks um, unless you only want to play 2. And then its entire strategy, like if you count it with Chain Burn or Time Lords, yes, Time Lord uh, Mystic Mind is actually a very good, or not very good, but like very popular strategy. The entire strategy has to kind of work around that. Because now, they only have one Metaverse, the one Terraforming, and the two Mystic Minds. So they only really have about four copies of the deck. And that gives it a, about a 1 out of 10 chance of drawing it. And so that kind of sucks. But uh, not for people that don't like the deck. It's really great for them. But we go down to Unlimited, and we have Stratos coming to 3 now. And that's pretty nuts, because Stratos is considered one of the best searchers in the game. That's why when you have a searcher in a deck, you call it a Stratos. And then we have Dynamite Knight coming to 3, something I don't think is going to happen in the TCG for a while. But Dynamite to 3 is actually pretty great for um, the True Draco strategy over there, because they do not have Diagram. Because I'm pretty sure they hit Diagram over the uh, True King Dino strategy, which they absolutely castrated over there. They have, like, one Overraptor, one Baby, um, the one Terraforming for the Diagram, even though there's no Diagram, uh, two Fossil Dig. I think they just brought Denglong back to three last list. But they, they really don't like Dinos over there, or Pendulums. But they also have Toad at three now, and having Toad at three is really great for the, um, the strategies that do run it. Like, Mermails, they play a single copy, but uh, Paleos, they don't have to worry about only having two Toad now. 
And then Necroz, um, they got their cycle back, and they have the Toad back now for a, um, a target for Zaborg and stuff like that. And then Spellbook of Knowledge coming to 3, because I believe it was at like 1 or 2 uh, before, and that's pretty cool, even though not many decks really play it. And then we have Solemn Judgment going to 3. I do not believe it's at 3 over here yet. I think it's actually still at 1 or 2. And not many decks... I think it's still at 1, yeah. But I don't think many decks would play Judgment at more than 1 anyway. So this hit... Or not this hit, but this kind of weight lifted off of it. Huh. Oh crap, sorry. I've been yawning a lot today. But this kind of weight lifted off the card's shoulders is... I was kind of fine. It was kind of needed anyway. Then we have Seize Fire to 3, a card that I... Eh, it's just there, really. And that is it for the list. Now, I don't know if this list works for worlds, or, like, if it's for worlds when it comes up. Like, I, I have no clue. Because the world list is, like, a mixture of both, both lists. And if it is a combination, like, and this is part of it then um that's pretty bad for the players that wanted to play meta over there or our meta at least and they kind of just like absolutely went nuts on all of the uh, meta decks that we have other than like striker but they already hit striker quite a few times over there and it's just wow and I don't know what it means over here for the TCG. Maybe next list we'll see some pretty crazy hits like this. With the Band Mermaid, one Gazelle, one Colossus, one Hawk. And then everything like that. But we're just going to have to wait and find out after about uh, another half a month. Because we don't get it until after July 1st. It'd be really cool if they dropped it on 4th of July. But I don't think so because only America celebrates 4th of July. And Europe and them, they don't... Uh, It'd just be weird for them. But anyways, that is a really substantial list. I know I said substantial a lot, but I don't have any very many other words in my vocabulary to use. But please let me know in the comments below what you think it actually means for the future of the TCG and the OCG. I mean, the OCG stuff doesn't really bother us too much, but if it does translate this... Like, if they do translate this list over to the TCG list, that would be pretty nuts. And then, it, like I said before, it's almost like they're trying to, like, soft reset the game by giving a bunch of these hits. And it really helps more rogue decks kind of come in and get their time to shine. I can't wait for Dinos to actually be a better strategy. And, uh, please bring back Lithosagum in the next list. I, I want it bad. Just, like, one Lithosagum, please, Konami. That's all we really need. But, anyways, that does it for the video. Like I said, please tell me in the comments what you think this implies for the TCG and the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! altogether. And this is Team Aurora Leader Delta, signing off.